I didn't want to be a statistic. I didn't see everybody around me panicking and scared and, and freaking out. And I was like, dude, this is exactly where I need to be. For a long time, I did get fueled off the doubt. You're only as resilient as you train your body to be. Your brain is just like a muscle. If you don't train it, it's not gonna grow. And it's taken a long time for me to be where I'm at. And it's, a, it's, a, it's just like going to the gym. From the time I was probably 16 until probably 23, 24, I struggled hard because I went through six years of hell. This guy mentored me as much as he abused me. The grace piece keeps you balanced. A lot of people, and myself included, they slip up one time and then they fall into a pit, you know, of despair. It's more about proving yourself right than it is to prove anybody else wrong. I kind of want to loop it back around. You've been able to have the history that you've had and somehow been able to become who you are. Most people, like you mentioned, don't make it this far. Mm -hmm. Most people's stories don't end as positively as yours do. Mm -hmm. Most people's stories end up front row of the pride parade trying to figure out their identity and have no direction struggling to figure it out trying to actively encourage other people to do it so that they don't feel alone in doing it and you didn't go down that road you could have easily actually how have you been able to break out of that and almost have the mental fortitude to be able to almost fix yourself mm -hmm. well to be clear from the time I was probably 16 until probably 23, 24, I struggled hard, struggled, struggled really bad. I not only with like depression, anxiety, and as a leader in the military, like I, I struggled with who I was as a man, as a leader, because I didn't fit in, you know, it was hard for me to make friends. I, I just didn't, I didn't click with the guys. And part of that was because I'd been exposed to so much in life that the typical bullshit that entertains most people just doesn't entertain me. I have no interest in, in it, you know? So dealt with a lot of loneliness, which I don't think is necessarily a bad thing. You know, the, the rise to the top is, is pretty lonely. You're going to leave a lot of people behind. And, and, and that's, that is what it is. When I joined the army at a young age, guys were out partying, drinking, you know, doing drugs. And I, I didn't want any part of that. So I, I, I didn't do it. So I didn't fit in with the guys. I didn't do the dumb shit. I was staying out of trouble. Um, I think I had a, I would say I had a pretty naturally resilient mind despite what I had gone through, which I'm lucky for. I think I'm lucky that my heart and mind maintained what I needed to, to survive. But also even what's kind of twisted about my situation was my abuser, Mondo, as much as he hurt me, he coached me a lot through my, through school and through life, you know, up until I reported him, he had coached me a lot on like how to handle certain things, how to handle certain situations, how to be better at one thing and, and how to move on and, and overcome this. He was a mentor as much as he was damaging me, which is really a, an interesting dynamic of our relationship that I, I hope to dissect one day with a psychologist who understands a little bit more than I do. But he actually coached me a lot through all of the pain and suffering that I had gone through. And so with that and the combination of being – had a few leaders in my life that I looked up to, not ne necessarily in my life, but, you know, Eric Thomas, for example, is a, is a motivational speaker. I love him to death. And I've, I, watched, I watched a lot of his videos growing up. Like when I had the ability to watch things on YouTube at my grandparents' house, I just came across him one day and, and he just talked about, you know, he knows what it's like to be a single parent household, homeless, eating out of trash cans. He knows what it's like and, and what it's going to take. You know, he talks about, you know, the bigger your dreams are, the, the earlier you're going to have to wake up, the later you're going to have to stay up, the harder you're going to have to work. And I listened to his message and it, it just fired me up. And I listened to it in the gym today. I listened to the same shit that I was listening to when I was 16 years old mm. today in the gym because it, it just resonates with me so much. And a lot of people, you know, will listen to like Jocko or David Goggins and they'll listen to them and say like, ah, you know, they're stupid or they're too intense or they're, they're full of shit or whatever. And for some reason, for me, they just click with me and it just, those messages that they that they produce 
mess uh it resonates with me and it helps me understand who I am and mm-hmm. and understand that yes this life unfortunately did not go my way but I can do something about it and then the same way that I was inspired I can do that to others which I have done you know and and I had some mentors I had a wrestling coach I wrestled in high school and and I I credit him for being part of who saved my life you know I got to see him earlier this year and and I cried in his arms for 30 minutes about him saving my life. And, you know, I just, I had people who helped me a little bit on the way and I didn't want to be a statistic, you know, Mm -hmm. like I I had so many people who doubted me and so many people who can't, who can't believe that I'm in the position that I'm in and they didn't even know my story. You know, they just kind of knew me. And now that they know my story and see the position that I'm in, it's incredible, you know? And so I think a lot of pe- I think for a long time I did get fueled off the doubt. I did get fueled off people thinking I was dumb. I was, you know, not going to make it. I wasn't strong enough to do something. Uh, for a long time that did fuel me and then I had to realize that doubt will only get you so far because eventually people are going to stop doubting you. Mm-hmm. I'm sure they have stopped doubting me now on certain things. Um I probably still have some doubt in other areas of my life from others. But anyways, when they stop doubting you, like once you win the MVP six times, are you, what is your motivation at that point? Cause you don't have any more doubters. They know you can do it. Right. So you have to look inside and do it for yourself. It's more about proving yourself right than it is to prove anybody else wrong. And once I stopped giving a shit about what other people thought of me, what other people, you know, wanted from me, I started doing more shit. I, that's when I wrote, that's when I started writing my book, you know, cause and even writing my book, I initially, my thing was like, I think my story will be, it deserves to be like a bestseller because mm. I think I've got a fucking crazy story and the way I've overcome it all, right? And I was focused on that for a long time. And then I kind of talked to a mentor of mine and he said, look, don't don't, don't write your book because you think it's going to be this yeah. big seller because it's not. He's like, I'm just going to tell you right now, it's, 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 it's not. It's not going to do what you think it's going to do. He's like, you need to do it for yourself. Yeah. And once I did that, I was good, right? I just started a podcast. I've got, I've had several people tell me like, hey man, what about this? Are you going to do this? Are you going to, you know, what about um, this kind of promotion? Or oh, are you sure you want to have that guest on? Do you sure, are you sure you want to talk about that? And I'm like, look, man, this podcast isn't for anybody else. I don't give a shit who listens. If you yeah. do listen, great. But this podcast is for me to have conversations with people that I want to talk to, you know? And once I got to that, I was like, good. I'm ready to start the podcast, you know? Uh, everything I'm doing in my life is for me, and my family it's not you know it's not for the the crowd the population i want to help and save people and i will do that to the best of my ability and 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 you know whatever the social media platform allows me to do but but also personal engagements um but yeah man just i had a naturally resilient mind as a as a younger man and then I remember getting the basic training, you know, showing up to basic training and seeing everybody around me panicking and scared mm. and, and freaking out. Nothing and, scares you. Dude, I was just like, bro, <laughs> I remember getting the basic and being like, bro, this is fucking awesome. Like they're yeah. they're yelling and screaming, we're push doing push ups and we're it's hot as hell out. And I was like, dude, this is exactly where I need to be. And part of that is a trauma response of of the chaos. You're you're yeah. you love the chaos. It feels more normal than it does to be calm. But it's taken so then after, you know, you go to basic and then, you know, travel all around the world, do all the things with the army. You're only as resilient as you train your body to be, you mm-hmm. know. So many people, once they graduate high school, for example, they stop moving. Mm-hmm. They stop exercising. And I think this is really bad for traumatized people because they lose their ability. They lose their confidence and their capability. They lose their confidence and and what they can do on a day-to-day basis you know and so i've maintained that your brain is just like a muscle if you don't train it it's not going to grow and if and if you don't train it in fact you'll have atrophy you will just go backwards you know if you don't read and write and talk and do the things that's necessary for your brain to grow so i've done a lot of reading of, of jocko's books um tim grover is another one that i read a lot of uh relentless and now i'm i'm connected with nick lavery who's a active green beret and he's a he's he wrote a book i read his book and i'm, mm. I'm active in his he's got a online forum it's called the forge where he gets on there every day and posts a message and we all kind of interact with one another and it's all about building that resiliency 
you know, overcoming, doing hard shit, being a better person. And then with all of that, to, to wrap up the answer is having grace. Okay. A lot of people, and myself included, struggle once they get on that train to success. Once they get on that gr- that train and they're like, they start working out, for example, or dieting, or, or, or they're doing something to better their life, and they slip up one time, and then they fall into a pit, hmm. you know, of despair, right? Of like, I fucked up. It's all over now. And especially people that are traumatized. I was thinking about this on my way here. People that are traumatized, we have a tendency to be very polarizing, right? Things are either really good or they're really bad. And either way, you're going to – you you lose, right? Because I'll get a connection or I'll, something will happen. I'm like, oh, my God, like this, this is a really good opportunity. And then it either doesn't deliver hmm. to the impact that I thought it would or it doesn't – they just don't show up, right? So then I'm like let down massively. And then inversely – when something really bad or excuse me, something minor happens, it can take you past that point and it can take you into this. Like, why am I even trying? Why am I even doing this? You know, if I get a no from somebody, for example, sometimes it's like, like, man, why am I even doing this? Why am I even trying? Why am I trying to do the thing? Why won't anybody give me feedback? You know, I go into this like deep, deep depressive state about it all, you know? So the grace piece keeps you balanced, you know, it's like, Hey, let's not get too excited about the good days and let's not get too beat up about the bad moments. You know what I'm saying? Life comes in waves. You're going to go up and down. And as long as you, as long as you're prepared for that, as long as you're prepared for those waves, good and bad, you'll be okay. But if you think it's all good or all bad, that's when you start to, to go off in life. And, and it's taken a long time for me to be where I'm at. And it's a, it's a, it's just like going to the gym. I have to do this shit every day. Hmm. Otherwise, it'll go away. You had put up an interesting post the other day, and I want to touch on it real quickly Mm -hmm. if we can. Um, About the idea of, I know that people say, this is God's plan and this is God's plan. And I think people say that because I don't feel like they have the words to Mm -hmm. explain what they're going through. Can you unpack that for me? I thought that was a really interesting way to say that. Yeah. I, and I, and, and not, it's not a knock on anybody, yeah. you know, to be clear, because it's very hard to unpack those words. It's mm. very hard to articulate how you got where you got. You know what I'm saying? A lot of people will get on a stage and speak. A lot mm. of motivational speakers or people who have had a crazy life. And and in my experience, what I've seen is they'll get on the – they'll say, well, how did you do it? And it's like, well, honestly, I just gave my life to God mm. or I, I just gave it all to God and, and everything was fixed. And my, the reason why I don't, I understand that it's hard to unpack what you were going through at the moment. The reason why that, that, that answer doesn't sit well with me is because people need tangible, like physical things to do to accomplish things, you know, to say that you gave your life to God, it almost sounds like, and that, and that was all that you did. It it sounds like this pixie dust, you know, Mm -hmm. I just, I just prayed and then it happened. Well, that's not what happened. You know, you prayed and maybe in your belief that God did align some certain things for you to, for things to happen, but you also got up and worked. You also, you know, showed up at this event, even though you didn't want to, you also took on this interview that you didn't want to, or you read this book that you really didn't want to read, but then it had a message in there and then it it helped you with this other thing, you know? And what's, what's crazy about when you're going through something hard or traumatic is your brain shuts off and it just goes into survival mode. It goes into this, like it's called, it goes into this like reptilian style, right? Just like the most basic piece. It's just survive. And so you actually, it is actually very hard if you're going through something traumatic to think about the things that you did. And I struggle with that. Even you just asked me, how do I remain Mm. so resilient and tough? And it took me a long time to realize that the reason why I was is because I went through six years of hell but also six years of like mentoring every single day, weekend, this guy mentored me as much as he abused me, you know? So that actually helped me a lot in my adulthood, or, or at least in my early adulthood of, of learning how to survive and be resilient, you know, and, and overcome things. So when people say they just gave their life to God, I think that they are shortchanging the people that they're trying to help. 
Hmm. I think that they should dive into that a little bit more, and especially if they're a big, big figure. You know, if you're a big figure, and and if you're actively trying to promote and help people change, then I think you need to rephrase your your path to success in a way that's tangible for people to grab and hold on to. And if you're not a big figure, and if you just say that, then yeah, whatever. You know, it's not a big deal, and I I get it. But like I said, if you're actively trying to do maybe what I'm doing and show people like there's a path. There's, a, there's this like journey that you can take to survive and, and, and overcome and succeed, then you should come up with those steps. And it's kind of a lazy answer. It is. really what it is. When people say, hey, why is you doing what you're doing? Oh, because God. You're like, well, what does that even mean? Yeah. Oh, it's just trust. Yeah. Like, how? Yeah. You know, and I struggle with that. Yeah. I'm trying to like be more cognizant and think about it and. It's not easy because sometimes when you don't have the words, and I guess I get your point, when you don't have the words, you're like, oh, it's it's God. Yeah. And for people listening that don't understand what that means, you know, how do you explain that? You need yeah. the words and yeah. you have to sit there and really think through like, okay, how do I put that out there? How do you explain concepts? Yeah. Yeah. The, so like Nick Lavery, I'll talk about him again. Um, because in his book, Objective Secure, so he gets his leg shot off, basically, mm. you know, and he was on an ODA. And they're basically like, you know, you're, there's no way in hell you're going to be able to return. He should have died multiple times throughout this whole process. Really, really impressive story. But should have died multiple times. He ends up getting his leg amputated um, above his knee. And he is a, he is a, he's a man of uh, faith or religion, mm. whatever he believes in God. I've recently discussed this with him because I was curious about his message because in his message, to my knowledge, I've never heard him say, God saved me or God did mm. this for me, you know, but in, in a recent discussion with him, you know, he, he did clarify, like, I am, I do believe in God. I do believe God probably had a part in my piece or yeah, a piece of my puzzle or whatever uh, in my story. Um, but he also laid out the tangible pieces and the steps that he took to recover from this incident, you know, where he got his leg shut off. And then like a year and a half later, he's in Afghanistan serving on an ODA as the first ever amputee above the knee amputee on a, as a green beret, hmm. crazy fucking story. Awesome guy. And the reason why I like his story so much and it resonates with me so much is because it wasn't just like, I had just prayed and then it happened like, cause that's not what happened. You know, he, and he, he even in his book, he puts out his meal plan. Mm. He puts out his meal plan in his book. And then he also has an objective secure. There's like two or three pages of a diagram that it's like, did you do this? Yes or no. Okay. Go this way. You know, mm. okay. Go this way. You know? So he, he builds out this whole plan for people, um, to accomplish goals as his books about goal setting and achievement, you know, because of what he did, his, his goal was to return back to the ODA after getting his leg shot off. Like it wasn't even a question to him and it, and it was deemed impossible. Mm. You know, he ended up going to dive school and passing dive school as a, as a, as an amputee, which, you know, is one of the hardest schools in the military. And so people like, like that. And I would even say like Goggins, I don't know. Um, in Goggins book, you know, he talks about, he woke up one day and just started doing shit. Hmm. He was tired of the life that he was living and he started doing it. And that's why it's so relatable to me. That's why I love Tim Grover's Relentless. He talks about Michael Jordan wasn't the best because he prayed. And maybe that was a piece of it, but Michael Jordan also worked his ass off and was hmm. the first one in, last one out and hmm. had this undeniable, tenacious mentality, you know? And that's what the book is about. Uh, so to your point... You know, the average person, I'm not knocking you. I'm not knocking anybody for saying that answer, that, that God saved them. I'm just saying if if somebody's, if you're trying to promote it, I would I would come up with something that you actually did. And that, and that mm. does take a lot of thought and yeah. digestion to, to figure it out.